Well, is the Obama administration exempting some from complying with the new health care law as a political favor? The chairman of the House Oversight Committee, Darrell Issa, is suggesting that. And he is demanding to know why some applicants are getting waivers from the health care law's requirements and others are not. Saying in a letter to the administration, quote, the current lack of transparency lends credence to the perception that bureaucrats are picking winners and losers in a politicized environment where the winners are favored constituencies of the administration. Well, Congressman Trey Gowdy signed the letter that is addressed to Secretary Sebelius of the Health and Human Services uh, Department, and, she, and he is also on the House Oversight Committee. Congressman, thank you so much for being here. So what, what's, what leads you to believe that just because they're giving waivers to some but not others, it may be political? Well, we don't know, and that's the purpose of oversight, isn't it? Uh, there are at least three levels of inquiry that I think are appropriate. Number one, what is the statutory authority for the secretary to grant waivers, period? Number two, substantively, why are waivers necessary? If you can keep your insurance if you like it, then why do you have a waiver process? Well, you know and the answer to that, though. You know, you know the answer number two, which is the, the, the people who want the waivers are, the, are companies and unions who have mini-med plans, which uh, are sort of like, you know, right. it's like you take a job at McDonald's, you don't get the full-fledged, you know, Rolls-Royce health care. You get something mini, well, and well, they need well, an exemption I mean, because the, the new health care law would, would require them to spend more than they're willing to spend, I guess. Well, that's exactly right. So uh, it, it was not true to say if you like it, you can keep it. Thirdly, uh, the process part of it, that's the substantive part, the process part, what we want to know is who sought waivers, um, what process uh, did the secretary go through, uh, what burden of proof did, she, uh, did, did the applicant have to prove their petition by, was there an appeals process if you were denied. Today we got a letter from the secretary detailing, uh, I say detailing, listing for us the companies that were denied the waivers. Uh, well, that's inadequate. I mean, we want to know why they were denied, what questions were asked, what process is due, to use a legal term. That's the procedural due process part of it. Those are legitimate questions, and frankly, if Oversight's not asking their qu those questions, they're not doing their job. What's the problem? Has, has Sebelius not been responding to you adequately? Um, that would be a fair way of saying it, yes, ma'am. So you've sought this information in what? You've gotten the back of the hand, or what, what, have they been giving uh, you anything? Well, I want to try to be respectful. Um, we got no response at all. Um, and today, uh, I learned that we got a, a very terse uh, response, simply a listing of who, was, who, who received rejection letters, so to speak, or denials. But that's wholly inadequate. I mean, Congress has an oversight responsibility. I, I'll give you a juxtaposition. Arnie Duncan has been before the Education Committee four times. Uh, we want Secretary Sebelius or her designee, frankly, to come answer those three questions. What's your statutory authority for doing it? Why have there been over a thousand waiver requests of over two million employees? And tell us about the process. Uh, if, if the but, but let me ask you this, Congressman. Why do you, what, what, what about this smacks of, of politics to you when the administration says, number one, uh, that it has approved 94% of the waivers requested. So only 6%, according to them, got denied. And of those who have been requested, you got huge co companies. Like, you know, McDonald's is not exactly like right. these unions. Now, gr I grant you, the information we have is that 40% of those who got waivers are unions, which are big Democratic supporters. Yeah. You know, but Ms. that Kelly, means 60% aren't. You make a wonderful point, and perhaps we should subpoena you before the committee because you've given more of an explanation <laughs> than the Secretary has. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, 94%. It, 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 that's good evidence for her. So why she won't come and explain that and lay out the, the, the case that you just laid out. Uh, I also, I do think it's important to ask about the 6%, and, and that's on the process side. On the substantive side, it is fair to ask why so many companies are seeking waivers. So there, there, there are three things that we'd like to ask. We don't anticipate the hearing to last very long, and uh, we would welcome her attendance. Do, do you, you know, do you have a thought as to why you're not getting more forthcoming responses? Because you know, the, the letter I, that you wrote talks about the administration's lack of transparency, and transparency, obviously, we've heard a lot about because it was promised to us by this president uh, as, a, as sort of a new era when he came in. Ms. Kelly, I was a prosecutor for 16 years. I was never good at judging other people's motives. So I, the only thing I can judge are their actions. We got a very uh, narrowly drawn response in writing today. It's inadequate. Uh, we're going to keep asking these questions. 
uh, it would be in everyone's best interest and most importantly the interest of the American public so they can see whether or not there is any reason for concern. Uh, it, this is not high math. These aren't hard questions. Come tell us the process you invoked, who received denials, why, uh, whether there's quid pro quo. I wouldn't begin to know that and I'm certainly not going to allege it without a factual foundation. But these are legitimate questions, and frankly, the American public should be disappointed if we don't ask these questions. Congressman Trey Gowdy, thank you so much for being here, sir. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. And don't, don't, don't even think about subpoenaing me, because I, now we have exhausted my knowledge on the health care waivers. We may anyway. <laughs> See you, sir. Yes, ma'am.